Okay, let's take a look now at generating displacement maps uh, from the work you've done so far. Uh, here you can see that uh, I have a Vicky 4 loaded uh, where we've done quite a bit of poly paint work and also uh, if we zoom in really close you can see that there's quite a bit of fine uh, uh, detail added in the the pores of the skin and the, the actual uh, eyebrows and different folds and things. So what we want to do next is basically uh, take those geometric details that have been sculpted in at this very high resolution and bake those out to our displacement maps. Uh, the first step in this process is to reduce your resolution down to the lowest resolution. So I'll go into my geometry fold out and we'll just drag that all the way down to one. And since Vicky uses multiple maps, uh, we have to take that into account as we uh, generate our maps and export them. So, since I have the figure grouped uh, here in ZBrush uh, based on its materials, I can just hide everything except the face. We'll frame that up so you can see it. And next I'm going to go down to my displacement map flyout. So here we have the displacement map menu where you see you have some options with adaptive scan mode, uh, displacement map subpixel accuracy, and smooth UV. Uh, for the work we're doing here, we won't be uh, changing much of this or any of this really. Uh, DP subpix, we, we really don't need to mess with that. Smooth UV, you can leave that turned off. Now, uh, if you want to really get the best details out of your displacement maps, turning on adaptive is not a bad idea. Um, however, it will uh, greatly increase the uh, the processing time for uh, for the program to generate those maps. So, uh, since we're just doing this quickly for the sake of demonstration, we're going to leave that turned off. Uh, next, you'll notice we have two different ways we can create the map. We can either create the displacement map using uh, the create displacement map button, which will create a map and load it into our displacement map channel right here. Or we can hit create and export map, which will allow us to create and export the map um, uh, to a PSD or a TIFF file. Uh, I tend to work um, actually out of just creating the displacement map and having it loaded in so that um, uh, there are more advanced uh, uh, techniques that I'm not going to be going into here. But, but there are times when you'll actually want to take a displacement map uh, from the channel here in the program, uh, save it to your alpha, and then create a document from that and do a lot of work in there to really... Uh, just enhance what you can get out of your displacement. But for right now, we're just going to focus on getting that displacement generated and exported in a, in a way that you can make use of it um, as a poser user. What we'll do now is hit Create Displacement Map, and we'll let that sit and calculate. So now that we have the map, you'll notice that it's, it's flipped vertically. Uh, that's something we're going to take care of here in just a moment inside Photoshop. So, but for now, we'll, we'll hit Clone Displacement, which will send a copy of our displacement map into our alpha palette. And then from there, we'll export. And I'm saving that as a PSD file. So now that we've created the displacement map for the face, we need to repeat the process for the rest of the, the different material zones uh, in the, the V4 model. So, I'm just going to invert what is shown or hidden. Then, I'm going to hide the arms. And the legs. Leaving us with only the areas we need for our torso map. And again, We'll hit Create Displacement, and you'll see a new displacement map generated. The one oddity is that if you have any texturing already in um, 
in place when it creates a displacement map it will automatically turn texture on so you might see something funny uh, show up for a second you can just click that to turn that back off uh, without any uh, without any real panic so now we'll clone our displacement map over to our alphas export that So we show the limbs, we're going to repeat the process one more time, hitting create displacement map, and let that calculate. Now if we were using adaptive, um, the process of calculating the, that displacement map would take, uh, on, on the system we use here, it would probably take about four to five times as long. Um, and it can really vary just depending on the model you're you're using uh depending on the kind of sculpting you've done there's there's a lot of factors that can really amp up the the uh calculation time if you're using adaptive so again you know for now we're just going to keep it simple keep that turned off and um, create uh, our displacement maps so the next thing we need to do just as in the previous steps is we'll hit clone then we'll go to our alpha and export So now we have created and exported our displacement maps for Vicky. The next step is going to be to switch over to Photoshop. And then from here I'm going to open each of these displacement maps. And you'll notice that they're all flipped vertically. Now back inside ZBrush, you'll notice, you know, if we hit create and export map, one of the options we have above that is flip map vertically on export. That's there to, to compensate for, for ZBrush flipping UVs vertically. Um, but it really, eh, I, I'm so used to doing it for years with ZBrush uh, 2, 2.5, and then 3, 3.1. Uh, I'm so used to having to flip them in Photoshop that I kind of automatically do it. Um, so uh, and and you really end up having to bring the maps into into Photoshop anyway uh, for some file conversion. Um, so it, it's really not that big of an issue to me. Uh, anyway, back inside Photoshop, uh, we'll take the map for the body. We we'll go to Image Mode. You know, notice it's it's currently um, in a 16-bit format. Uh, uh, I believe some of the newer versions of Poser can use a 16-bit map. Um, and, and you'll get much better quality out of a 16-bit map. Uh, if you're going to take these maps to other you know, more high-end apps like Maya or 3D Studio Max or Soft Image, uh, then you definitely want to use the 16-bit versions. Um, however, um, at the same time, you, know, you really, for most uses, actually going down to 8-bit is not going to really hurt you all that badly. So we'll go ahead, go to Image, Mode, change this to 8-bit and then we'll go again to image rotate canvas flip canvas vertically and from there I'm gonna save this as a JPEG and save that with the maximum quality and repeat one more time and that takes care of getting displacement maps out of ZBrush for use in Poser